Let's go back in time to 1932 as Converse brings you historic footage of the legendary original Celtics with whom all great professional teams are compared. We have now taken over your radio. Richie Guerin is about to show you the most important step in getting past a man. It's the first one. And Oscar will inbound it. The men in green, the Milwaukee Bucks, that's Al Cinder against Bellamy. Jordan, Allen shakes three, gets two! Gilmore, oh! Big stop! Oh! Oh, the lead to lead artist, you get 21! 4.28 to go in the first quarter for the Cow Palace. Here's Barry. Jordan, open! Chicago with the lead! Hello and welcome back to the Over and Back Classic NBA Podcast. I am Jason Mann, and with me as usual is Rich Krejci. Rich, great to be back with you. Absolutely, I'm uh, I'm excited. Let's do this. Yes, we are going to we are continuing our WrestleMania series, um, talking about the Celtics playoff battles with Wilt Chamberlain and the Philadelphia Warriors. Well, then eventually San Francisco Warriors. We'll get into that, but. Um, they battled in 1958, 1960, 1962, and 64. So uh, every other year, they were uh, they, they were battling at it. Um, they um, uh, the Warriors before the Celtics won the championship in '57 and began that dynasty. That uh, you know the 11 out of 13 championship dynasty. Uh, the Warriors had been the previous champion in '56, and they were led by. Um, uh, Paul Arizon, who was a uh, who was a jump shot pioneer and one of the great players of his day. Um, basically, he became a jump shot pioneer because um, he would play on very slippery dance floors early on. So when he tried to do a hook shot, his uh, foot would go out from under him. So he decided. So he it worked out better for him to jump and didn't have to worry about slipping. And the more they did, the better he he became. And eventually, before he knew it, all of his shots were jump shots. That the, from an <laughs> NBA.com profile of uh, talking about him. So that's uh, uh, necessity being the mother of invention and all that good stuff. Um, he was the third player to score 15,000 points, and he missed two seasons for being in the Marines. So he pro- probably likely would have been the first to score 20,000 if it had been for that. Um, he was described as a great leaper, a slick ball handler, and a tough defender. Um, an NBA.com profile calls him sort of an early version of Michael Jordan or Sidney Moncrief, which, of course, is a uh, – uh, a high compliment, especially for Jordan, but you know he was certainly um, a uh, uh, you know again he was one of the you know, probably the top five players of the 1950s. So um, that's you know high praise as well. Um, he was the first player with um, nine straight 20 po- points per game season, and as a six foot four a small forward, he was the shortest player to average um, eight rebounds for his uh, career. That's from um, Curtis Harris at Pro Hoops History. Um, who also argues that he would have been the best choice for NBA MVP in 1952 if one had existed. He also made three all NBA first teams and one second team. Uh, the other um, Warriors 50 standout was uh, Neil Johnston, who was a great scoring center who made four all NBA first teams and one uh, second team. Uh, he led the league in scoring three times and led in win shares five times, but he was forced to retire in um, at age 29, 1959 because of injury um, and was a, uh, Third in win shares and and in win shares forty eight for the entire decade of the fifties. So I, I think he's sort of kind of the the most forgotten player out of this era. And then yeah, you really don't hear anything about yeah. him. I mean, very I mean, very well, other than if it's come from Curtis or or us or you know some people that are really doing uh, intense research. But yeah, he's not a name that that would arise you know most ever in conversation. Yes, and 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 both players um, led them to a, a championship in. Um, in 56 against the Fort Wayne Pistons. So they won that series of uh, four games to one. Um, Arizin, um, he, uh, he, he averaged, um, about, about 29 points uh, per game during the, uh, the playoffs, including an Eastern division finals, um, uh, victory against uh, Syracuse, where he scored uh, 35 points in uh, the the clinching game of that series. So, and uh, he had um, he had 26 or more points between 26 and 30 points in all five games of the finals. So, a good performer. And um, the first time that the Warriors and Celtics battled in the playoffs in the Russell era was in 1958. This was actually um, 
this this was before Wilt came along. So um so so not yet the Wilt uh, Russell referee, but uh the Celtics were 49-23, um the Warriors were 37 and 35. The um Celtics had won the champion the championship previously in 57 of course. The Warriors beat the Nationals two games to one in the uh, playoff series. Um the uh, the Celtics, of course, were led by uh, Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Bill Sharman, uh, Jack Ramsey, Tom Heinsohn. Uh, they also had their only season of big minutes from uh, Lou Syropoulos, who uh, recently uh, passed away. We we talked about him just a little bit when he uh, when he passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this was also the last season for Jack Nichols, who had been a uh, kind of a, a longtime Celtic, as well as Andy Phillip and Arnie Risen, who were veterans who had kind of gone along for the ring. This was also the first year for um, Sam Jones. And um, the uh, key warriors were uh, Paul Arizon, uh, Neil Johnston, and uh, Tom Gola, who had returned from uh, after a year in the military. was a night was like a really good, versatile um, defender and playmaker. Um, kind of, you could kind of think of him a little bit as the Draymond Green of his day. Um, that was kind of the the style of player that he was kind of that do everything tough, you know, could defend guys who were bigger than him, that kind of thing. Uh, other key guys were uh, Joe Grabowski, Jack George, Ernie Beck, George Dempsey and Walt Davis. And all the guys that we mentioned actually were on the 56 title team. So they had a lot of uh, stability. The only real mm-hmm. new guy on the team was Woody Salisbury, who was the. Uh, actually the rookie of the year this year and um he was a good player but um really just battled like a horrible amount of discrimination and stops in philly and then especially in st louis and um and and then in chicago before he was able to win the uh championship with the 66 celtics there's a really good article from the baltimore city pay um paper which if you google woody salisbury baltimore city paper you'll find it and it just kind of really details um just all the obstacles that he had to go through in, um, you know, just dealing with racism from, you know, from teammates, from um, fans and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you can obviously be aware of it, but just to kind of viscerally like see just everything that he had to go with and, and getting that perspective from a guy who, you know, was a good player, but not like an all time great, but just, you know, um, we know about it from Russell. We know about it from other guys, but to, you know, to, to kind of see it from a guy who wasn't really that well known is illuminating. And it definitely could have been a different right. uh, career for him if he, um, if he hadn't done that so and it's a tough story to read too because he's, he's gone through a lot of issues in his actual personal life as well yeah. and battled like different health issues and stuff so it's it's a it's a very it's it's interesting and it's definitely worth reading but yeah it's not the no. most happy it, yeah i mean it's a difficult story there, there's, there's not much much um uh you know not, not much heart, heartwarming about it unfortunately so um anyway um so this series the celtics won it uh four games to one uh what were some of the key things that happened in the uh, series Yes, yeah, so of course, uh, in King of the Court, uh, the very, very, very awesome Bill Russell biography that we've talked about many times throughout this series that you should definitely read if you haven't already decided to do it already, but uh, uh, Russell suffered tonsillitis and had headaches, um, so he was really, really under the weather, but uh, still had twenty eight or uh, still had 18 and 25 in Game 1, and then he also had 28 rebounds uh, in Game 2 and 40 <laughs> in Game 3, so uh, despite being under the weather, it did not matter, he was still pretty good. So uh, uh, Coach uh, George Sinetsky, uh, he was forced to bench Neil Johnson, the team leader in win shares per, uh, or win shares uh, total. Uh, Boston, game, uh, Boston won Games 1 through 3 pretty handily. Uh, the Warriors took Game 4 in Philly, uh, but the Celtics then won Game 5 in Boston in 93 to 88. Uh, Charmin led uh, with 28 points per game, or 20.8 points per game, rather, uh, and Heinzen had 19.2. Uh, Paul Arizon, he had 24 points per game, and Johnson was held to only 13.2, which is way down from his season average of 19.5. Yeah. So uh, definitely were able to uh, stop uh, Neil Johnson there a little bit. Arizon had his game, but yeah, it was it was, it was pretty pretty well. I Boston was the better team, and it wasn't really even that close. No, definitely know? not. Yeah, and uh, and we talked about it a little bit or, or, or in one of the earlier shows. So basically, you know, Neil Johnson was this you know great player in this early days, and then once Russell came along, he just was it really embarrassed him, and um, he, you know, basically again forced them to bench one of their you know their best players because you know, he just couldn't handle Russell, and it, you know, Russell was obviously on another level athletically. And and as uh, a guy who understood, you know, the the um, defensive defense and um, and blocking shots and all that good stuff. So as we've talked about many times about the uh, greatness of Bill Russell, but you can't talk about enough because he was really awesome. So um, the uh, the 1960 Eastern Division Finals, uh, this was the first Wilt Russell uh, series. The Celtics won it four games to uh, two. Wilt and Russell, as we mentioned, played um 
eight times. Russell's team winning seven times, and four of these series went to a Game 7. Uh, the records for this, Boston 59-16, the Warriors 49-26. The Warriors had uh, beaten the Nationals two games to one. Um, heading into this, the Celtics had gotten a bye, as they usually would. Um, the Celtics were led by um, Russell, Kuzi, Heinsohn, Ramsey, Sharman, and Sam Jones. Uh, usual crew by then. They also had a backup big Gene Conley, who we mentioned before was also a major league pitcher. Um, and, um, uh, Casey Jones, who was, uh, Russell's, um, university of San Francisco roommate and a uh, great defender and, uh, reserve small forward, uh, Gene Gorelia, who uh, played for four seasons with the Celtics, n- never really getting that uh, many minutes for the most part, uh, in his, uh, career. Meanwhile, the Warriors were led by veterans um, uh, Gola, Arizin, Salisbury, uh, Grabowski, and Beck, who all were on the 16th, so six years later, or excuse me, four years later, they're still on the team. They also mm. have uh, Guy Rogers, who we mentioned is a uh, point guard in our, in our previous show, who um, was a future Hall of Famer, although has the lowest amount of win shares for any uh, Hall of Fame player that we have the numbers for. Uh, also reserves Andy Johnson and Vern Hatton were um, on the team. Uh, but, of course, the big uh, new player was um, Bo Chamberlain, who this year won both MVP and Rookie of the Year. He averaged 37.6 points per game and 27 points, uh, 27 <laughs> rebounds per game were both at the time were NBA records that each of them he would later exceed. So re- rebounds he did not exceed by much. Of course, points per game he would exceed by a little he, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just the slimmest of margins. Uh, this team was also coached by uh, Johnson as well, uh, Johnston, uh, yes. Neil Johnson, but uh, he clashed badly with Wilt. Yeah, that, that, uh, definitely did not get along very well with no his new his new leader and new uh, uh, best player. So that's all right, right, <laughs> right. So, uh, and this was actually very uh, you know a, a pretty tight series. There were um, four games of eight points or fewer, and actually three of those were won, won by Boston. Which um, it, it, up until this point. Um, a lot of the series, uh, actually, Boston lost the close games, but in this case, Boston uh, won uh, most of the uh, close games. Um, and um, uh, and Heinsohn averaged 21.2 points per game. Russell had 20.7 points per game. Uh, Chamberlain averaged 30.5, and Arizon averaged 24.2. So uh, what were some of the highlights of this uh, series? Yeah, some other stuff. Uh, Tommy Hudson, he averaged uh, 21.2 points per game. Uh, Bill Russell had 20.7, oh. which is actually – oh, sorry. I, I actually went through the scoring. Uh, oh, did you oh, Did you say that? <laughs> I swear you didn't. I'm listening. I swear I'm listening. I, I'll I'll delete this part. Which part did you stop at? I've been I, sitting there I, I said Chamberlain and then Arizon averaged the numbers and then – Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I didn't do a very good job of transitioning to like the, the bullet point. I, uh, I Okay, no I, problem. I no, no, no problem. I, I, I wasn't sure. I, uh, it, I, maybe, I, heard, I heard the Chamberlain part, but I guess – it's, it, okay. it's, it's been a long day. It's all good. Yep. All right. <clears throat> all right. So uh, Boston, they won game one, uh, 111-105. Um, uh, during game two, uh, Red Auerbach instructed uh, Tommy Heinz in a stand in Wilt's way after the Warriors scored, preventing him from getting back uh, to defend while Russell rushed back for an open shot, which probably led to uh, his high scoring output. Uh, eventually, Wilt lost his temper, and they got in a fight, leading to Wilt to throw a punch for the first time in his career. Uh, this led, of course, to a big melee. Uh, he accidentally hit Tom Gola. Uh, Johnny Most line, Johnny Most, who we've talked about a few times in the series, he says, believe it or not, the stilts punches are even less accurate than his free throw shooting. Ooh. Burn. Wow. wow. Yeah. Jeez. Lay into it. And then uh, Wilt injured his hand, uh, but the Warriors, uh, they won the game regardless. Um, 115 to 110. Uh, Wilt was taken out of game three because of his hand injury, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> his x rays revealed severe bruises, and the Celtics went on to win that game 120 to 90. Uh, and they went on to win game four, uh, 112 to 104. Uh, Wilt came back strong in game five. He scored 50. Uh, and the Warriors won 128 to 107, so they kind of got the series back on track. Uh, game six in Philly, the score was tied 117 to 117. Guy Rogers missed two free throws. Boston got the ball back. Bill Sharman missed a jumper, but Heinsohn was able to barely tip it in with his fingertips for a buzzer beater, and the Celtics won 119 to 117. Russell in that game had 25 points. Wilt had 26. Uh, Rogers had a really good game with 31, and Salisbury uh, had 26. Uh, and then after the game, uh, Wilt tells journalist Ike Ellis that uh, he's going to retire and later officially announces it before changing his mind weeks later, which that would have been very interesting to see uh, how he would have actually reacted to that or, or what the NBA would have been like had he just said, you know what, I think I'm done. This is annoying. So, But uh, unfortunately, things yes. I don't know if 
their 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 fortunes wouldn't really turn up right away. Be a little while. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah, oh, well, hang in there, Will. Hang in right. there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Will certainly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was fine. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he did all right, you know. But I get what you're saying. Um. So. Uh, 1962 um, Eastern Division Finals, the Celtics winning uh, four games to three. Uh, Celtics were 60 and 20. The Warriors were 49 and 31. Uh, the Warriors had beaten the Nationals again. They keep beating the Nationals, although, again, it was only an 18 league um, <laughs> at this point. So I, I think maybe the 19th had been added uh, this season. But either way, um, a small league. So you're going to be beating the same teams a lot. Um, the um, uh, Celtics, of course, had uh, Russell, Sam Jones, who had replaced Bill Sharman as a, as a starter who had retired. Heinsohn, uh, Satch Sanders had been added to the team. Uh, Bob Cousy, Casey Jones, Ramsey and Lust Katafra, who still were contributors, even though they were aging. Um, guard Gary Phillips, who one of the new players who actually would end up going to the Warriors the next season. Um mm-hmm. And Carl Braun, who was in the final season of a very lengthy career that actually went back to the um, BAA, uh, came over uh, from the uh, Knicks. So, um, so he was kind of, again, one of those guys who uh, at the end of their career, the Knicks picked up and, um, you know, was uh, was you know, would throw would, would contribute there and, uh, you know, get get the ring and, and have some fun there. Um the top warriors, of course, uh, from the uh, from two years before, they had uh, Chamberlain, Arizin, Rogers, and Gola. So, so those key players, but a lot had lost a lot of guys, obviously, uh, from that. Um, Al Adels, guard from who was in his second year, was one of the uh, toughest players in his day, as we mentioned um, in our previous show. He also uh, had fifty five plus years with the Warriors organization as a uh, as a player, coach, and uh, executive and advisor. Um, all those things, uh, longest affiliation with any NBA organization in history. Um, the newbies uh, were rookie uh, Thomas Sherry um, and uh, Ed Conlon, who was a former national piston who was in his uh, final year. Um, we talked about this 62, of course, was the year where Wilt's 100 point game happened. So we just we talked about in the last show how um, uh, Wilt. Um, they the Warriors had hired Frank McGuire's coach who tried a new approach with Wilt saying that because after Wilt had had bad relationships with his previous coaches, he said, you know, the Warriors can beat Boston if Wilt averages 50 points a game. Wilt's uh, response was 50. Nobody can average 50 game a game in this league, which is a story from the rivalry. And um, and then, of course, Wilt, he ended up doing that and uh, doing it very successfully. Yep. <laughs> yeah, his uh, his lowest point total in the year, which I always find fascinating, was 26, which is like. You know, <laughs> any mortal, it's like 26, again, pretty good game. You know, not bad. For Wilt, though, it was like so far and away his worst game of the year as well. So that's it's just uh, funny. How, it's just an incredible year. If you ever get a chance, you know, and we've talked about it too, but if you look at the game log and just really look at that season and what he was able to do, it, it, it's just, it, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating <laughs> of just what he was able to do and how good he was at, at scoring in that year. It's just, yeah. it, it's incredible. And, and, you know, obviously we understand, you know, pace and all that stuff, inflating some of those numbers, but that's still, sure, I mean, oh, yeah. that, that, that so much energy and so much work to be able to you know to, to do that i mean it's just it's just amazing just exhaustion yeah. from just like every game and we mentioned before in that world one i mean he played every game i mean like all but like what was it eight minutes or six or eight minutes that he played the see i mean he was in there every time and it's not like he could take possessions off because the ball was in his hands you know he'd, he'd walk down and boom there's the ball and like yeah just the exhaustion and just the energy that it took to do that regardless of the pace regardless of whatever i mean it's still just super super impressive yeah so um for, so for the series heinzen averaged 22.1 points russell had 20 two points um wilt had 33.6 um Mashiri had 21.6 and arizon had a 20.3 uh, life magazine at the time described wilt russell as the fiercest private war in sports today so showing that you know wilt and russell was getting you know national attention as a big rivalry in sports and was adding um more cachet to the nba um at the time uh, the Warriors starters actually outscored the uh, Celtics starters for um, the uh, for the series, but the benches were the key difference. Um, Ramsey, Casey Jones, and Luskadoff outplayed um, Adels, um, Ed Conlon, and um, a- and the Cobra uh, York Larisi. Um, so, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, the teams traded wins at home in games one through four. Boston won big in games one and three, and Philly won uh, close games in games two and four. The, the home game, a- home team, actually won every game in the series, and this was back um, where um, you alternated the first four games in the series rather than you know one and two being the um you know being one team and, and three and four being another team so yeah um right. so you want to take it from game five 
Yeah, so game five, uh, Wilt and Sam Jones had an altercation. Uh, and this was not the first time that these two had kind of roughed each other up. Uh, Sam had a long history of antagonizing Wilt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In this game, they collided and had angry words. Uh, Wilt chased him, and Sam grabbed a photographer's stool and threatened him, <laughs> which has got to be just a fascinating uh, video to watch. Uh, Guy Rogers then uh, punched Carl Brown. Uh, that prompted a response from Laskatov, and then there was a melee. 200 fans stormed the court, uh, but they were held back by police. Eventually, order was restored, uh, thankfully, and then Boston uh, ended up winning the game 119 to 104. But yeah, nice little, uh, just a little, yes. you know, shove back and forth caused a <laughs> big melee from all these right. guys. Right. And, so. and, and Sam and Wilt's relationship was less physical and more just uh, Sam would try to get like under his skin. And, and with, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Sort of, no, like, I didn't mean like, yeah, yeah I mean like sort of rough each other up in terms of just, you know, mentally. Yeah. Uh, in a lot and of and, and so Sam that. would rile Wilt up and then Russell would get mad at Sam for riling Wilt up because, you know, of course, Russell would have to defend him, you know, for the most part. So it, it, it's more, it was mostly in fun, but, you know, occasionally, obviously, things would. Would um you know would uh, uh get heated? <laughs> uh, game six, uh, not too much here. The Warriors won uh, one hundred nine to ninety nine. Uh, then we, so we go to a game seven, a big, big, big game seven. Uh, of course, you probably know what happened here, but Russell he scored nineteen uh, and twenty two uh, rebounds. Wilt only had twenty two points. Um, Sherry had thirty two points though, so we actually uh, tops of the team with sixteen seconds left, and the score tied at one hundred seven. Boston held for the final shot. Sam Jones, who had twenty eight, switched a jumper and put Boston up one hundred nine to one hundred seven. The Warriors angrily argued to no avail that the referees uh, uh, to with the referees uh, that the Bo- uh, the Boston scorekeepers let the clock run too long after the shot connected, leaving them just one second on the clock instead of three. Uh, Philly inbounded the ball. Russell tipped the pass, uh, and the game was over. Um, Boston coach would, uh, of course, Red Auerbach, you know, famous Red Auerbach, would chalk the discrepancy of the game to a malfunction. So he sort of just kind of shrugged it off. Uh, and this was unfortunately the final game, uh, final NBA game for Paul Arizon, who would go on to the Eastern Pennsylvania Basketball League for a few years while working with IBM, which is just a fascinating, uh, like, imagine that, like, uh, like a. A pretty decent guy, still kind of in the peak of his career, being like, you know what? I'm going to take a job with Google. So I'll play in like <laughs> I'll play in like a, a semi pro league in like Santa, you know, to like Santa Cruz, California, or whatever. But uh, I'm not going to leave the NBA. I don't really think I want to do this anymore. But uh, just fascinating. But apparently, uh, you know, he retired from the NBA. Uh, he wanted to stay near his Philadelphia home. You know, obviously, just didn't want to leave his family too long. Uh, but yeah, he did pretty well. He led that club to a 1964 EBL uh, title, and he was also named the MVP of the league in 1963. Uh, and then the Eastern Pennsylvania Basketball League eventually uh, rebranded to the Eastern Basketball League. Uh, then into the more famous Continental Basketball Association, the old CBA. So it's a uh, it's kind of fun to see that lineage uh, work its way through there. But uh, yeah, I don't know the Eastern Pennsylvania Basketball League. I feel like it's a little bit of a niche there. <laughs> it is. I'm glad they were able to spread the whole continent away from you know just uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. Right. So. I mean, you, they they spread far. You know, well, what's you know like <laughs> Eastern Championship Wrestling becoming Extreme Championship Wrestling? Exactly. Right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there we do way more wrestling references in this podcast. I don't think we do enough. <laughs> that that's our goal for the next one hundred is to to just like one per episode, just kind of a little dab in there, and then all right, I'll, I'll put you in charge of that, Rich. Okay, deal. Um, nineteen sixty four finals, the uh, the the final battle. Uh, the, of course, the first time between uh the two teams in the finals because the uh, Warriors had gone to San Francisco, gone to the Western Conference after the sixty two season. The fans did not really embrace the team. The team struggled in 1963 under um, under coach uh, Bob Fierick, who would later become the general manager and do a little better in that role. Um, so Alex Hannum would then take over the uh, Warriors, um, trying to re- try to restrain the team's uh, wilt scoring and play more of a team game. He kind of felt that the other team ha- teammates had become too dependent on Wilt. Um, it's interesting that it was almost the opposite approach of uh, Frank McGuire, although Wilt got along pretty well with each coach. Um, later, the relationship with Hannum would be a little bit strained, but that wouldn't be until they would be reunited again in Philadelphia. Um, the records of the teams, uh, Celtics were 40, were 59, 21. The Warriors were 48 and 31. The uh, Celtics had beaten the Royals four games to one. The Warriors had beaten the Hawks four games to three. Um, the Hawks still in St. Louis. Uh, the, uh, the veterans for the uh, Celtics were, um, Russell, John Havlicek, who had stepped up big in his second year on the team, although it was still the sixth man, uh, Casey and Sam Jones, uh, Satch Sanders, Tom Heinsohn. It was the final seasons for uh, Clyde Lovellette, uh, Loskatoff, and uh, Frank Ramsey. And then newbies, um, Willie Knowles, also known as the Whale, who we talked about in the previous show, had been with the Knicks and uh, had been a four-time All-Star, uh, actually played the previous season with the Warriors and now would finish his career with the Celtics. Uh, Larry Siegfried uh, was also um, 
Uh, this was his rookie year. Uh, he had been a teammate of Havlicek's at Ohio State and then would later have a big role in the later Celtics teams. He didn't really play much uh, this year. Um, the Warriors, they um, had still had Will, of course. They had Rodgers, um, Macheri, and Adels uh, from the uh, 62 team. And they had lost uh, Gola, Arizin, and Frank McGuire after the move. Uh, those guys didn't want to necessarily move out to the West. I, Gola actually did stick around for a while, but he, um, but he eventually uh, was traded. Uh, they also had um, Wayne Hightower and Gary Phillips. Uh, their main rookie was uh, Nate Thurmond, of course, uh, future Hall of Fame and top 50 player, um, great rebounder. Um, and there's a lot to kind of how um, it would go as, as far as, you know, Thurmond's um, uh, rise led the um, for the uh, Warriors to have the ability to uh, trade, well, which we can get into a little bit uh, at the end here. But um, why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, about the series? Yes, so um, series uh, the averages, uh, Bill Russell, he had sort of at this point let a little bit of the scoring load go to others and kind of, you know, obviously still a great rebounder, but uh, 11.2 points per game, uh, 25.2 rebounds per game. So he still was very, very uh, important in that aspect. And then five assists per game as, as well, which, of course, is a huge part of Bill Russell's game. A lot of the scoring load had now gone to Sam Jones, who uh, had 21.2 points per game, uh, 4.4 rebounds per game, and 2.8 assists per game. But uh, Sam Jones is a guy, in doing research for this, like, I, I always sort of appreciated him, but looking back and, and doing in this entire little playoff battles thing, I'm just seeing how important he was to the scoring there and I don't know if he I know he's you know obviously he's a Hall of Famer and gets uh, you, you know a, a lot of people do know of his contributions but I don't know if enough it's just a really really awesome player when you really like, break it down and see what he was able to do in these playoff series as well I mean he always in all these that I was doing research for he just popped out as like oh man Sam Jones you know leading yeah. scorer Sam Jones and it, yeah. it wasn't even close a lot of times I mean he was just such a consistent scorer for them yeah. and, uh, and, as and well. his ability and, to, to hit clutch shots too I mean he just yeah exactly well, he always comes times. up as a guy in those last few minutes that, that's hitting shots it's it's crazy I mean he gets a ton of credit of course, but I wonder if it's it's even not as much as he probably uh, uh, deserves. But uh, Havlicek, uh, he also had uh, 18.4 points per game, uh, 4.0 rebounds per game, and then 3.6 assists per game. Uh, Wilt had a nice little line, 29.2 points per game and 27.6. Uh, Macheri had uh, 16.4 points per game, 4.8 uh, rebounds per game. And then Nate Thurman, of course, as we mentioned, the rookie, uh, he had 11.2 uh, points per game and 13 um, uh, rebounds per game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Russell had become a little bit more tired as usual during the playoffs. Of course, we mentioned you can look at his kind of scoring load and see. Uh, he was dealing with strained hamstrings, pain in his Achilles, sore knees, uh, and then even announced, uh, and this is in the rivalry, he announced before the series began that he was thinking of maybe retiring as well. So um, you sort of see the sl- – I mean, obviously he had a few more good years in him, but you sort of see the – you know, he's starting to get there in age and, and injuries are starting to pile up a little bit for him as well. Yeah, he would also start to have more um, – you know, would be stressed out and would um, start to have more like insomnia and more um, just uh, – you know, the stress would kind of add up for him more. And, of course, he was going to be coaching the team in a couple of years. Um, I mean, he was still – you know, he was still an amazingly effective player for um, – you know, up, up until at least like through, you know, six or in 69 when he started slowing down but um but yes obviously the you know he was aging a bit and um you know getting getting close to 30 and it was it was getting harder um but but yeah uh it is interesting that he you know, actually publicly announced that he, he had even thought about it and he didn't obviously but yeah. um but the fact that he was even thinking about it and, and, and yeah. shared that with the press i thought was interesting Absolutely. Uh, games ones and two. We'll go uh, through the series here a little bit. Uh, they're fairly easy for Boston win. Uh, they won both of the games. Nothing really big of note, uh, except for game two, which had a uh, a very famous Wilt Auerbach confrontation. Uh, and this is from the rivalry as well. Uh, Bill Russell tried to separate them, and he warned Red for his own safety. Get back, Red. You're about seven in- or six inches too close. Uh, then uh, Wilt knocked Russell's hands from his shoulder. The first time they had ever gotten rough with each other. So that uh, sort of was the first time there. Uh, Wilt uh, later got into fights with Clyde Lovett. Uh, uh, who had knocked out Wilt's two uh, two of Wilt's teeth uh, in his rookie year with about fifteen seconds or twenty five seconds left? Rather, Lovett uh, nailed Wilt with an elbow, and Wilt punched him in the jaw, dropping him to his knees. Uh, police ended up having to split up the teams. Auerbach wanted Wilt ejected, but they just called a technical, and um, Earl Strom. Uh, who was the author of that says uh, Red gets this? Or, 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 sorry, not the author. He's, uh, he's um, referee. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Red uh, gets the stiff out. <laughs> so he said, Red, get the stiff out of here so we can finish the game. Red continued to argue, and Wilt says, Red, if you don't shut up, I'm going to put you down there with Clyde. So that's. <laughs> That would have been very interesting to see just Will just cold clock and Red Hour back. Like, imagine that. Like, geez. Yeah. Like that, that and is, um, and Russell and uh, Red both kind of talked about that as a um, 
like like that is it sort of a moment of like that kind of marked their friendship a little bit of like um Russ like expressing like um just uh concern for red just like his safety it's like okay you you do not want to go into this you know <laughs> you you want to chill out right here now you don't want to you know uh, i mean I'll, I'll back you up here to a certain point but you're in a scary situation you need to be careful kind of thing so uh the wars uh, they followed that yeah oh absolutely uh wars they want to blow out in game three uh game four is close uh but boston won uh 80 uh 98 to 95 in san francisco uh game five the celtics win on russell's tip in off a of heinson shot uh russell was jumping past wilt to get the ball they won 105 to 99 uh to cap off the series wilt had 30 points russell had 14 yes and then, as we mentioned, Wilt was traded to the 76ers, who had moved from Syracuse in midseason 65 after the Warriors got off to a terrible start. They had Nate Thurmond, who was, you know, pretty good replacement and was going to honestly be you know, a difficult guy to play with, you know, with with Wilt. Um, not, not that you need spacing as much then, but, you know, um, you still I think Thurmond was better off as a center than as a power forward. Um at that time, um, what was also dealing with um, health issues, in, in, including uh, trouble with his pancreas, I believe, and then had had some uh, personality problems with uh, the team owner, uh, Franklin Muley, who uh, was a bit of a, an eccentric and uh, and just didn't get along with the uh, Wilt so much. So um, he would be traded away and the Warriors would uh, they, they would uh, end up doing OK by uh, drafting Rick Barry and, um, and and making another run to the finals in a couple seasons. But um but uh, it, uh, you know, the the divorce that was that was Wilt's first divorce from a franchise, and wouldn't be the last, and uh, won't be the last time <laughs> that we talk about his teams uh, facing off against. No, uh, yeah, himself. he's not. Will, we're not done with your Wilt yet, no. but uh, we're unfortunately done with your your Warriors. Yes, but. done with we're done with the Warriors for now. So, uh, anything else, Rich? No, I believe that's it. All right. Well, uh, cool. Thanks, everyone, for uh, checking us out. You can find us at hardwardproxism.com. Uh, we are on Twitter and Facebook by uh, going at Over and Back NBA. Um, and uh, we'd love it if you would leave a review for us on iTunes and Stitcher. That helps people uh, get to know us and uh, f- and find us on the Internet. If you know anybody who's into NBA history, you think they'd like our show, just go ahead and tell them. Just say, hey, this is Over and Back NBA History Podcast. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. And uh, and that's about it. Until uh, next time, thanks for listening. We'll be back again soon. <laughs>